All right, everybody. So first and foremost, thank you very much for, uh, for being a part of today's presentation. Um, as I said, today we're going to be talking a lot about some of Apple's services and what they have to offer, specifically as it relates to understanding the device enrollment program and volume purchase program. Um, while, uh, while we're doing this presentation, I'm going to try and leave all questions, all questions and answers towards the end. Uh, please feel free to use the Q&A field um, as I've already inundated the chat field with, uh, with requests to make sure that you guys can hear me okay. So uh, in the question and answer field, if, you, if anything pops up, please put them in that Q&A field. I will answer them towards the end of the presentation, presentation allowing us some time to, uh, to get some feedback uh, and some information out to you guys. Um, again, this is a one hour webinar. We're gonna try and get the content finished within about 45 minutes and allowing us about 15 minutes to answer those questions. So I'm really looking forward to presenting to you today. Um, my name is Christopher Eames. I am what we call an Apple evangelist within Jamf. Um, my role is to really work with the Apple Store teams and Apple business teams uh, in helping to engage customers uh, into a Apple only, if you will, or, uh, or even understanding how to manage those Apple devices within their workspace and training the teams on how to identify the need for mobile device management specifically as, re, as it pertains to Jamf. And we'll talk a little bit about why uh, we, uh, we truly feel we are the best option for Apple solutions um, when it comes to device management. So uh, a long history in Apple retail business as well as other industries and, and an experienced sales leader, um, I've seen how Apple can transform a culture and that can transform a, a work a workflow for any organization. Uh, and so I am very proud to be a part of Jamf, helping customers to do that as we move forward. So a couple of things we're gonna talk to you today. Uh, we're gonna go through why we at Jamf are who we are and how we support customers. We're gonna talk a little bit about the, or we're gonna talk in depth rather, <laughs> about Apple's deployment programs and an overview of them. And then we're gonna take a tour of the volume purchase program as as it stands today, as well as a tour of the device enrollment program as it stands today. But we're gonna have a little footnote there as these two programs are being migrated uh, or are currently migrating into uh, one portal, into one uh, management system. And so we'll talk lightly about that, um, but stay tuned for future webinars where we will talk in depth about that new, uh, that new portal. And then we'll talk about next steps and resources and, and then obviously finish off with your questions. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into who we are at Jamf and why we truly believe that we are the best solution in helping organizations succeed with Apple. It goes back to 2002 when one of our co-founders really needed a better way of managing the Mac interface uh, at his university. And so, you know, if, with any large university, especially the University of Wisconsin, to go from one building to the other can be an all day event uh, if you're doing it by foot and managing different devices across the campus. So he developed a, a software uh, by really coding into the, into the binary and into the root code of the Mac, being able to manage them remotely, being able to uh, provision and or image them remotely, and really providing a great package that he could get a lot more done in a lot less time. And thus, Jamf was created with uh, what was then called Casper Suite and what is now called Jamf Pro. Uh, over the years, as you see iOS starting to uh, blossom and, and grow and, and really become a leading force in the workplace, um, you know, we also saw some small organizations that needed that support as well. So what we did is that we, we managed to build a, a second source or a second program known as Jamf Now, formerly known as Bushel. Um, and from there, we were able to um, really create an, a, an entry level product as well as a IT administrative product uh, that would really help customers to, to use this as their means of managing devices. So Jamf now is an easy MDM, get started, get up and running within about five minutes um, or less if you're really incredibly savvy as, a, as an individual. Uh, and then Jamf Pro is a really great tool for IT professionals in app and managing um, all of Apple devices, not just iOS, but iOS and Mac specifically. And while we've got some great upgrades to Jamf now as of recently, um, obviously we want to partner with you to understand the complexity of your, of your deployment uh, and understand your workflow and ensure that we're getting you the right product for the, for the, for the purpose of growth through your organization. So we'll talk a little bit about those uh, as we keep going along here. 
So Jamf now, as I said, easy device setup, uh, easy to use. Uh, it's, it's security without complexity, which is a key factor when you start talking about small and medium-sized business. You're, you know, you're in the business a lot. So you want something that's quick and easy to get up and running and started with. And then if you look at Jamf Pro, some of the key features there, zero touch deployment. How great it would, would it be to send the device from the manufacturer straight to your employee and know that you can get it provisioned and managed before they even get it uh, without even having to come into the office it, itself. So a great way to be able to manage those devices remotely. Uh, you can configure and, and manage your, your app distribution, get really detailed inventory reports that you, that you would need for um, whether it's your executive team or just for your own knowledge base. There's a lot of details in there that will help you to, to make some great decisions. And then obviously self-service, as, a, as an app catalog or as a feature set catalog for your organization where uh, you can actually help your employees to be more empowered and, and kind of work as they need to. So a lot of great details here when we talk about Jam. Um, we are really committed, as I said, to making sure that we have the best solutions possible for Apple, but uh, for Apple devices. But as we talk about that, then we start talking, well, how do we manage Apple devices better? Um, and a lot of that comes down to Apple deployment solutions. So if we look at this, uh, there are two very simple solutions that help um, any organization to attach to uh, our MDM, our mobile device management solution, uh, whether Jamf Now or Jamf Pro. And those two programs at Apple are known as the device enrollment program and the volume purchase program. So what are they? Essentially, the device enrollment program is your, uh, is how you're going to have your proof of purchase around your devices, and we'll walk through what that looks like. And the volume purchase program, essentially, again, uh, where device enrollment would be would focus on the device, the volume purchase program focuses on licenses of apps and how you're going to distribute them. So if we look at how they impact your organization and your management um, of, of your devices, first and foremost, the best thing you can do is, from a device enrollment program uh, is the fact that with it, you can have zero touch enrollment into Jamf. So what does that mean? As uh, we'll show you as we go through this, but as you purchase devices from Apple um, and it goes into your device enrollment program right away, you'll have visibility to that device before it even ships and start being able to manage it and, and, and enroll it into your, uh, into your system, which is a wireless, hands-free, every acronym you can throw out there that makes your life easier um, where you don't have to physically touch the device it makes it the best zero touch deployment option that you could have. Uh, the other great thing about device enrollment is that it puts the devices into a state of supervision. So what does supervision mean in this case? It really just means you gain more access to, to what the device can, can do or, uh, or more restrictions uh, to the device that you can apply that will make it truly your perfect, um, your perfect scenario or your perfect uh, playbook that you can provide your, your employees. And so we can talk a little bit about that. Maybe if we have time to, I'll show you what that looks like uh, in, in our Jamf Now portal. Um, and then proof of ownership as well as pre-configuring devices. So the proof of ownership is big. That becomes a, a key part with things like activation lock. Uh, if you've ever experienced that as an organization, um, having the device enrollment program as your proof of, as your proof of uh, ownership and then doubling that down with a, a Jamf MDM, uh, Jamf Now or Jamf Pro really gives you the opportunity to have a two-minute solution to solving those problems, and we'll show you that as well. And then on the volume purchase program, this really is the best way to provide your own company app store. Um, you can purchase the apps for your employees and distribute them as you need to, uh, all through Jamf. And then you can securely distribute apps with data. So, you know, in, the, in today's day and age with security breaches and leaks of information, um, you know, you as an organization will want to completely retain and, and control how your data is being used. And with the combination, again, of the volume purchase program and with Jamf as your distribution method, um, we have some great tools to be able to show you how you can secure that data and keep them all in one place, or keep all your data secure, I should say, uh, and minimize, uh, if not eliminate, the, uh, the potential for breaches. So what are the requirements for these programs, right? It's not that hard, I mean, and if anything, this is where um, we start talking about Apple IDs a little bit, but it's, it's really, a, it's a simple solution. So the first is you have to have an Apple ID that's never been used. We're talking about the volume purchase program. Uh, the reason for this Apple ID that's never gonna be used is that that is your uh, company registration, if you will. That's what 
the um, that's what Apple will look at as your device is being owned by you through that Apple ID, and it will tie into what your customer number will be. Um, or sorry, this will tie into your um, volume purchase program as a means for ensuring that you own the apps and that you're going to distribute them using your MDM and so on. You will need a Dun and Bradstreet number. So if you do not have that to date, uh, it's a great way to make it, of making sure that you have um, that it provides like a credit, that you're earning your credit as a business, and making sure that you're um, you know that you can keep some some status, if you will, uh, as it relates to building your business credit. Uh, you need a valid business address, a valid contact uh, for information to verify, and obviously, in order to distribute those apps, uh, there's no point in downloading apps if you can't distribute them. So why not use Jamf as your MDM to do so? And then for the device enrollment program, the best thing about this one, again, is your Apple ID is, is going to be core. It has to be another unique Apple ID. So some key suggestions for organizations. If you're going to have one unique ID that's for DEP and one for VPT, um, a lot of solutions engineers with Apple will say, well, do something like DEP admin at myorganization.com or VPT admin at myorganization.com. It's very simple, uh, very unique ultimately, and it will, very, it will help you to um, remember and understand what your logins are going to be. But for the purpose of this exercise, what we'd like to look at here is the fact that with that Apple ID in the DEP, that is going to be your means of saying, all of the devices now that I purchased that are enrolled into the device enrollment program really bubble up to this one Apple ID. And we're going to see why that's important as we talk about activation lock here in a second. You need, a, you need your DUNS number again. So, again, a great way to be able to provide uh, information on, not information on the organization, but to be able to um, assess your credit and, and everything else as you continue to grow your organization, not just as it pertains to this, but uh, generally speaking, as an organization and building your business credit, it's an important part of your business. Um, you'll need an Apple customer number, which you can get from your Apple Store teams. There are also other resellers that provide uh, reseller numbers. If you if you are working through, uh, let's say, a Verizon or a T-Mobile, as an example, um, you know those reseller numbers are important as well. So that way, we can make sure, um, or you can make sure rather, that you have a customer number identified so that way as you look for those proof of purchases you can do it through DEP and then again valid contact information and there's no point in having DEP if you don't have an MDM to distribute that information to so why not use Jamf as your MDM so quick notes um, this is going to be very brief uh, they integrate both DEP and DPP integrate with Jamf now and Jamf Pro um, if you do not have a done number it takes about 30 days uh, sometimes sooner, to, depending on the severity of the situation, but it takes about 30 days to get one created and approved through Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, and if you already have one, but you're not certain as to what it is, you can easily look it up. Um, there's an actual uh, direct link in the developer.apple.com that, that actually makes it very easy to look up, uh, to look for that Dun's number for your, for your organization. Um, if you've already enrolled in VPP, you can use that same email. So that's a, that's a, you know, once it's been enrolled, you can use that same email for other purposes except for DEP. And there's an approval process that will probably take about three to five days to make sure that your enrollment um, and, that your, and that your credentials with uh, Dun & Bradstreet are all approved and making sure that um, Apple can continue to move forward with your DEP and VPP information. All right, so this is gonna be the first portion of the demo. And what we're going to explore first, as I mentioned, was volume purchase program. So I'm going to um, step back for a second here and, and just say these are going to be screenshots that we've uh, that we've pulled from uh, the website. And the reason for that, as we're talking about data and breaches and so on, there's some secure information as it relates to Dun and Bradstreet numbers um, and some purchasing information. So we don't want to get too deep, deep into that and <laughs> have anything happen over this WebEx. So. Um, if you have any questions uh, at the end of it, we can still review some of that information and, and, and kind of give you some guidance. But for the most part, when we talk about the volume purchase program, um, and again, I'm going to emphasize this, this has likely changed uh, with the advent of the new um, Apple Business Manager, which we can talk um, briefly about, but these are elements that are involved. If you haven't upgraded to the Apple Business Manager portal, this is what you would see in your volume purchase program deployment portals. So. Um, 
here's what you see. It, it ultimately, you see, um, you know, this is where you would purchase all of the apps if you're in the portal itself. I'm going to show you some fun tricks as it relates to uh, Jamf now in a little while, but you can see over on the top right, it has my login information. Um, if I click on that, it gives me a few different options, like my account summary, my purchase history. If I want to redeem any volume purchase program codes, and obviously if I'm done with this, the ability to sign out of the actual portal itself. So, you know, with purchase history and redeeming the license codes, that is going to give me some uh, flexibility, if you will, depending on how I'm doing this. A lot of times when we're talking about the redemption of, of code because we've inherited or we've earned some form of, 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 um, of code that we can use, right? So here you'll see as I go into my account settings, uh, we have manage distribution process where, that, where you have to download the token. So this token exchange is really one of the processes that you use when you're starting up an MDM. That's what you use to try and create that firm handshake between the volume purchase program, and we'll see the same thing in the device enrollment program as well. But that, that token is what's going to create that connection between your portal and your Jamf Now or your Jamf Pro instance to ensure that we can keep those things connected, um, whether by purchasing applications or uh, having access to the information on your DEP device that's been purchased. So. Pay close attention to the tokens uh, when you talk about managed distribution. It's part of the setup process. Um, we have another webinar coming up um, early next month about setting up your Jamf Now instance, and so this will be a big part of that as well. You can see what my last purchase was back in March 1st. Um, you can also see my personal account information as well as some of the information around the, my VPP credit and uh, previously redeemed credits as well. If I go into my purchase history, this will give you everything in terms of what I've spent. As you can see, I'm a little bit of a stickler. I'm only downloading free apps and in large quantities at that. Um, so there may be a question, why would you wanna do volume purchase programs of, of free apps? Why not just let your employees download them themselves? We'll talk a lot about that uh, as we go through a Jamf Now demo because there's some, there's some security around owning that software or, or owning those apps. And we wanna make sure you understand why that's important. And then ultimately, if you do have a volume purchase program credit that you would have earned from the store uh, or from uh, another source, but pr primarily through the Apple Store, um, you can insert those like, those uh, credit codes here and redeem them and basically add value to what you need to do to purchase. Now, for DEP, if I look at DEP, this is a snapshot of what uh, you would want to do when you have your Jamf Now instance all set up. And what you're looking at here is uh, essentially the, uh, the, the check marks or the ability to say, okay, my, my DEP, VTP um, uh, accounts are linked to my Jamf Now instance. So we talked about tokens and, and keys, right? Within that, you'll see within the DEP portion of your Jamf Now instance, you'll see the area that will say, you know, let's download and work through your DEP token uh, and make sure we can have that connection because again, there's no point in having DEP if you don't have a strong Jamf um, MDM behind it to be able to push out that information to your devices. So as you have your device enrollment program, you get started and get all set up. Um, you want to get into the portion that says manage devices. Now, there is a section for managed servers. That's where you would add the, um, the Jamf MDM as part of that. So that's part of that connection that you're creating. But a lot of the, the token information that you'll need is in that area of managing the servers. Um, so as you can see here, when you get into it, you're going to generate a server token. That server token is going to then, then be used to attach to, uh, sorry, so here's the information that you would use, um, and you're going to click OK and, and really gain that, that, um, that key, that token that you need for your Jamf Now or your Jamf Pro instance, and then you're going to start creating, uh, you're going to add it to your Jamf Pro or Jamf Now instance as a means of creating that gateway, that handshake, that digital connection that's going to make them all work well. And, as, and by virtue of that, um, you can also see what devices you have assigned. So historically, if you look at this, um, you want to try and say, well, I want to take a particular device and move it to, you know, a different server or see when it was brought on to my, uh, when it was brought into my DEP portal. You can actually do that as part of this assignment history and see where they're going, uh, what server they're related to, uh, and what the device is. So it's a very nice way to 
um, kind of get a brief look at everything. Uh, if you have multiple MDM servers, this is a great opportunity to be able to um, send it to one versus the other. Um, but as we at Jamf always believe, we are the best, um, we're the best solution that to really give you the best access to everything about the device. So I hope to see in that MDM server column, nothing but Jamf Now or Jamf Pro servers. Just saying, hope you guys agree. And <laughs> we'll show you why we believe that in just a few moments. So once that connection is made, you can see here, it'll tell me, you know, what I need to do. I'm going to upload that DEP token from, um, from the uh, deployment portal into Jamf now. And once that's done and that connection's made, now I get to have a little bit more fun. So there's a few ways that you can manage devices and kind of uh, get through what this looks like. The first is entering a specific serial number. So if I have a specific serial number, say serial number 123456678, that's going to identify that, say it's an iPad, take that iPad, and now I can assign it to the server that I want to. Um, I've, obviously, I would have already created that in the manage server section. Um, so now that it's part of that portal, I can assign it to the server, choose the MDM server that I need, and then from that point on, um, anytime a device is purchased, it's going, if I can make I can make that the sole MDM that's going to be used, and every time I purchase a device, it lines in DEP. I will see it in my um, in my Jamf Now or Jamf Pro instance. I can also unassign devices. So if I want to take it out of that server uh, and just kind of leave it stagnant until I'm ready to use it and put it into a different um, management server, then I can do that as well. Um, I can also disown devices. And the, the beauty about that is in, I remember back in the old days, um, there was an, you know, I worked for an organization that said, well, you need a computer, so you can buy it through the organization, pay it off over X amount of years, and then after those years, it becomes yours. So what this does is that as a management piece, if you have uh, company-owned devices, now you can disown that device and let the employee keep it um, if you feel like it's part of a, a reward or part of a, 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 an option for them to be able to buy into their device and maybe take things out of their paycheck. Not that I, I'm going to talk about people's paychecks, but at the same time, it's very helpful to know that you can provide some type of reward to, to your employees um, and give them that opportunity as well. So the other part I can do, I can also look it up by uh, purchase order. So if I put in a purchase order number, or I can look at all things assigned in all uh, new devices or all devices that are available, um, I can also take a look at it that way and make sure that either by order number or by devices, I can manage it as I need to. Um, there's also this concept of downloading a CSV. Some of us may still be keeping track of our devices via spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to show you within Jamf now how beautiful it is to not have to worry about a spreadsheet anymore because you'll have a, a more in-depth inventory uh, system. But at the end of the day, that does give you some opportunities and some options on how you can manage that, um, that DEP uh, information and make sure that it's working well for you. So a couple of other things about, um, about DEP and why supervision is important. I talked about it in, 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 a quick, in a quick instance, really highlighting that with supervision, you can unlock um, different aspects of your device. And what that means is that it, it essentially, because I own it, if I, if I can use an analogy, and for people that have known me, they've heard this analogy a few times. Um, if you look at the difference between leasing a car and owning a car, so without DEP, that's like you leasing a car. If you lease a car, there's not very much that you can change to it without violating your lease, right? So think about that lease car as like a bring your own device to work. So I can use my personal device here, but the company can only access so much of my device uh, to be able to make sure I can work. So they can add things like my company email, uh, distribute the apps that I need in order to work, and maybe provide some security around their data so that way there's no breach. But ultimately, my device is my own, and they cannot do anything to it that I don't approve. On the flip side, if you have your devices into the device enrollment program, and therefore they are supervised, that basically means you can do what you, you can do as much as Apple allows you to, so to speak, um, to be able to manage that device to your liking. So that's like owning your car for the most part. So where you own your car and you can, you know, put on big rims and big tires or tinted windows or 
you can trick it out as much as you want to. If you're a street racer, you can probably put some nitrous in it and, and race at night, whatever you need to do. That's essentially what you're doing with your devices when they're enrolled in DEP. Now, you might not put some big shiny rims on your iPad, but the truth of the matter is you definitely want to take control of some of the applications, and maybe you want to restrict things like the app store so they're not downloading apps. Um, so maybe you want to make sure they don't delete applications off the device that you're distributing. All of these become a value to you as you have your devices enrolled in the device enrollment program. So that is you owning your devices and you having the ability to manage them as you see fit. So you talked a lot about most of these, right? So you can provide additional administrative rights to your devices using DEP and DPP. Um, you can access lost mode, which we're gonna show you here in just a few moments. Activation lock bypass is very important. Um, you can drop ship your devices without having to worry about configuring them or having them come into the office first to configure. You can actually do it remotely and wirelessly. Um, it'll automatically enroll your devices into your Jamf MDM, which is phenomenal. Um, you have deeper and more advanced restrictions. Um, both our products have gone through a, a revamp and, and, a, and, a, and, and uh, an update that provide more flexibility when it comes to restrictions now. So um, we're not going to give you a quick, we're not going to give you an in-depth tour of that, but we're going to really show you some of the elements that make it really important for you to feel confident that you can use Jamf and gain, some ac gain deeper access to your devices. Um, the other part is um, while you're maintaining ownership over the apps, you also maintain ownership and security over the data that's in them. And then DEP and Jamf together, make, you can make sure that your profile cannot be, cannot be removed from that device. So a lot of people ask, well, you know, my employee can just take it off and, and just use the device as they feel fit. But with DEP and Jamf together, you can actually say, make sure this profile cannot be removed. And that isolates or at least makes sure that that device is truly under your control uh, for as long as it's in, in your power. And then you can push updates for iOS using Jamf Pro. Um, that was recently updated uh, a few months ago for Jamf Now. You can also update the iOS in Jamf Now. So we, uh, we are fully trying to adjust our, our, um, our products to make sure that we meet the needs of our customers. Uh, and so again, we, there's a lot of solutions that, um, a lot of success that come with these solutions. And we do feel that um, if you have a, an opportunity to look at and work with Jamf Now or Jamf Pro, you'll see that all of this becomes true and the, and the, and the security and the confidence in what you can do with Apple products um, gets even deeper. And now you can start looking at how successful you can be in terms of managing, not just managing devices, but managing your workflow and your experience for your, for your employees um, as we move forward. So great option to, to combine both Apple and Jamf to, um, to try and uh, be successful in your organization. So I'm going to back out of here for just a quick minute. Um, I'm going to open up a, uh, a new window. I'm trying to find, okay, so let's open up Safari. Um, and we're going to, and now we're going to do a new window. I'm going to drag this down. And we're going to get into Jamf now um, and really see, uh, and really look at what we can do now that devices are in, um, now that I have devices that are in, um, that are enrolled into Jamf now. So I'm gonna log into our demo site. This will give you a, a really in-depth look of everything that we have or everything that you can do when we start talking about these things. So, you know, we talked a lot about uh, the device enrollment program and seeing those devices that are important to us, right? So in here, if I go to devices, I can take a very quick look at the devices that have been enrolled. Um, and with this enrollment process, I can also see which ones are not being managed yet. So these are all of my DEP devices that I've, that I've been able to work through. Um, and in this one section, I can say, okay, well, everyone except for uh, these two devices, Martha's and Jane's device, uh, they are, they're not enrolled yet. So, or everyone's been enrolled except for those two. With that, I can have a conversation with Martha and Jane and just understand why they haven't either A, turned on the device or why they haven't enrolled the device at this point in time. But what happens is that when they turn it on, um, as the device goes through that initial activation set, it will, um, it will ultimately start checking on Apple and, it will, and Apple's push notification system or push notification servers 
will say, you know what, you belong to company X. And so I'm gonna push you over to their MDM server, which is Jamf, and from there, once it, once it um, kicks in, it will say, okay, this device is now owned by company X, and here's the profile or the blueprint that you're going to be working with. And in this blueprint, we'll talk about um, configuring it the way you need to, how the apps work, uh, and some of those preliminary, um, those preliminary uh, functions and policies that you want the device to have. So that's what that's the benefit of DEP as it's connected to uh, your Jamf your Jamf instance. And with VPP again, this is where you get to uh, once that token is created. Now I can go into apps and I can start downloading apps from the Volume Purchase Program directly from my Jamf Now instance. So if I wanted to, I wanted to add an app, I can look up let's say Dropbox. Oops, if I can spell it properly. So I can look up Dropbox, and it will do a quick search for everything in the volume purchase program that is related, either has Dropbox in the name, uh, publisher, um, or whatever it may be. So I can scan down here and can say, oh look, here's Dropbox for iOS. Some of the other things you want to take note of, especially now that Jamf now has some deeper um, or more Mac options to it, you want to make sure that you're choosing the right app for the right devices. So if you have um, a mixed environment, when I say mixed environment, I apologize. Well, if you have a, a, a mixture of Mac OS and iOS devices specifically, you may want to say, okay, I want to look at only Mac apps that deal with Dropbox, and now I'll get the Mac only uh, options that are available to me. So it's a great way to be able to do this. Um, you can download as many token or as many licenses as you need to distribute. So if I do go back to the apps that I have available, you'll see here it'll show how many I have, uh, how many licenses I have remaining or how many have been used in total. So great way to distribute them. This is a great way to be able to manage them. And now we'll get into how do you use this to your advantage when you're creating uh, the blueprint for, for those devices. So the first, the first thing we're gonna look at is the apps. If I wanted to add an app, it's very simple. I just click add an app. I select all the ones I want to. Um, and because this is, a de this is a demo, it's not gonna transition these over, but ultimately need to give you an idea. Um, the, I can take these volume purchase program apps, I can add it to that app, to that uh, setting, uh, to that blueprint rather, and then I'll know that all the devices that are connected to this blueprint are going to receive those applications all over the air without me having to actually bring that device in. Great way to be able to manage it and a great way to be able to um, um, increase my workflow, if you will, so, or maximize my efficiencies around my workflow. Um, if I look at um, some of these others, these are other options they have within Blueprints. Web clips are, are fairly new. Uh, security as it pertains to creating your passcodes for your devices. Email is great. Again, you can set that up pr um, prior, to it, uh, prior to the devices being sent out to your employees. Um, Wi-Fi, you can set up your Wi-Fi networks for a multitude or a number of different locations. So that way, if you have a traveling salesperson or if you're an executive going from one office to the other, um, your devices are all going to connect to those individual locations easily, securely, and, and immediately. So some of the things we wanted to talk about. So when we were thinking about, let's talk data first and foremost, we were talking a lot about how the distribution of those apps that you have is really important for you to own. We saw how many free apps I purchased. Like I said, I'm a stingy, I don't want to purchase like big expensive apps, but sometimes there's a need to. But in this particular case, because I want to use Dropbox as my distribution method, or because I want to, as my file, cloud-based file sharing distribution method, um, and maybe I want to use Adobe as another example for editing uh, some of those, some of those PDFs, and maybe even uh, the use the iWork suite, you know, pages, numbers, and Keynote to be able to um, edit some of my productivity documents, right? So, as um, as far as that goes, if I have them all purchased and I have them all ready to distribute in this blueprint, um, what's beautiful about this is if I go into security and privacy, there's this new, we renamed this. For those who are, have been on some of our webinars in the past, uh, we called it managed open in, which basically meant that you can manage what application that that document is opened in. Well, we've now changed the name to manage app data segregation. So just by definition itself, it just basically means the apps that I own and the data that I have within those apps is segregated to the ones that I distribute. So let me back that up for a second, just in case I, I, I kind of over explained it or under explained it. 
if I have that iWork package, the keynote, the numbers, the pages, Adobe, and I have Dropbox as my application, if those five apps are the ones that I distribute for the purpose of my organization. That means whenever my employee opens up a document in Dropbox and I say, edit it and send it back to me, they can edit it in one of those four other applications, iWork or, or Adobe, and then and then be able to send it back to me using their work email only. So now that's a great way to kind of keep that data. So what's going to happen is if they open up that application and they have that share function where they say, well, where do you want to open it or how do you want to manage it? This will basically say the only way you can open that document from Dropbox because that particular app is owned by you as an organization, the only place you can open that document is in, is in one of the apps that your company distributed to you. So great way to be able to secure your data easily and quickly, um, and all because you just own the licensing to the software itself. So it's a great opportunity here to be able to uh, secure your data and make sure that you feel confident uh, that you can sleep at night, that it's not being shared and limiting your risk to breaches. So that's one of the beauties of, uh, of using uh, the volume purchase program. Now, if you look at the device enrollment program, I'm actually gonna go back out here to devices. And anytime you wanna look and explore some of our blueprints, we do have a, a more in-depth tour of our blueprints available to you through, uh, through one of our YouTube channels. Um, we, can be, we can easily share that out with you as a follow-up uh, after, uh, after this webinar. So now, if I look at um, our devices themselves, there's a couple of things that we wanna talk about here as to why DEP is important. So we talked about volume purchase program and why that's important from the purpose of protecting your data. Now, what about protecting your device or ensuring that you can always use your device? The two key things that DEP does, um, aside from you know, providing deeper restrictions, which we'll look at too, but the two key things is that, one, it puts, in, you know, it puts into supervision to allow you to get deeper access. And this is what we call an activation lock bypass code. This is one of those deeper access points, right? So if I were to um, go into, um, I'm gonna show you a quick video. And this video really highlights what you can do with, um, with Jamf as an activation lock, as it pertains to activation lock. So activation lock is something that is very prominent for a lot of organizations. You purchase devices, uh, over the years, and now you have to worry about, well, what happens if I, um, you know, if I, if an employee leaves or, you know, they, let, they have to be managed out, but now this device is enrolled under their Apple ID. So you can see here, this is a big problem for organizations. You can have a multitude of devices that are now seized up because you don't have that person's Apple ID. So what DEP does is that it looks at your uh, assortment of devices and it assigns each one an activation bypass code. So now in the instance where this comes up, we're using that code in the, pass in the password section to really say, you know what, this device belongs to Corporation X. And so regardless of this person's Apple ID, I know that you're owned by somebody else. So I'm gonna give you this bypass code to get past this section so you can set up the device. This will kick out that person's Apple ID and activation of the device to them um, and allow you as an organization to, uh, to continue to move forward in, um, in getting the device ready for your next employee or to just have available uh, on the shelf. I know a number of organizations that probably have tens upon almost dozens of, of devices that are sitting on a shelf or providing great weight to the paper that they have stacked on their desk but we don't want you to do that. We want you to be able to retain control of that device and start using it for what you intended it, to, uh, intended it for, which is ensuring that you can get productivity out of, your, out of your workforce. So as you can see here, it continues through. I'm not gonna go through the entire thing, but, I, um, but I'll bring up one final point as I zip through. So at this point, if you needed to, this is where that Apple ID comes up again. Do not be afraid to tell your employee that they can use their Apple ID but if you chose to, you can actually bypass that uh, using that don't have an Apple ID or forget or forgot it, and you can continue on. That's part of the workflow process that you have to decide for yourself as an organization as to what's important. But ultimately, that will be the means for which you can get the device back to, I call it back to zero state, um, and start using the deployment that, uh, that you have intended for that device, regardless of whether or not it has an Apple ID or not. So, 
again, very handy, very, handy, very useful, um, and it helps with managing uh, what you need to do for that for your organization. So now if I look at this, that was activation lock. Another key feature as we were talking uh, briefly was lost mode. So if I needed to, I can enable this device to go into lost mode. I can type in a message, um, please return. Uh, oh, again, I'm gonna try and not misspell anything. Uh, 8675309 is the number I love using because I'm a child of early music. Um, and then I can even play a sound for the device itself. And what will happen is as this is enabled, it will give me a GPS point of where that device is in that moment. And I can continue to trigger this loss mode until it is found and, and recovered. Um, but the beauty of it is that it does lock down the device. So it puts the device into low power mode. It locks up the, the OS completely. Um, it plays that sound so that way if it is potentially just lost or stuck underneath someone's sofa, uh, that they can find it easier. And so all these things help to make sure that you can find your de device, retrieve it, and it will keep the history of where you've um, tracked it uh, in those instances that you've reset or that you've set the uh, loss mode uh, as, as a means for tracking it. Now, someone has asked, well, why can't I just use Find My iPhone? So that's a great question. But for Find My iPhone, you need to have the Apple ID for all of these devices. Now, I don't know any one person that, that is confident enough in sharing their Apple ID with most of their family members, yet alone with their organization. So you need to really think about what's the easiest way to be able to recover that device without breaching upon Sarah McGill's personal private rights, privacy rights around, around getting, giving her, getting her Apple ID in order to retrieve the device. Take it out of their hands. Do not, give, do not create a bad situation for you or your employees have something, have Jamf set up, have your DEP enrollment set up, so now you can activate um, loss mode whenever that, that does come up or whenever that occurs. Um, and then finally, if we go back in here, um, you can see there's a number of other, um, a, num a number of other asset or another uh, uh, options that you have available to you from locking the device or unlocking the device, erasing it, um, again, the bypass code being a crucial part of why you want to get your devices enrolled into DEP um, and how we would use it. Uh, and all in all, these are the key elements as to why the, the beauty and the combination uh, between Jamf and Apple and, and the Apple uh, enrollment tools make it seamless for you to be able to manage your devices, manage your data, and distribute your perfect scenario for the devices uh, without having to um, to incur too much uh, damage mentally, emotionally, <laughs> or financially, um, this will absolutely help you to, uh, to move forward as best possible. One last thing I wanna show you too, um, we talked about supervised mode, uh, and then we'll get into Q&A after this. So again, if I look into apps as an example, um, if I want to disable the, uh, the ability to install apps, the reason why it's important to put them into DEP is that now, I can put them in a state of super, those, those, um, those restrictions that are deeper that you can't normally do, um, if it's in supervision, you can do them now. So I can hide the app store. I can ensure that even though in most cases, if you hold on to your app, you have them dancing with a little X to delete them. Now I can say, you can't do that. They'll dance, but you can't vote them off the island or off the stage. So. It gives you the opportunity to say you can't delete them. So a lot of these require um, super, well, not a lot of them, but there's a good number of them. A lot of them require supervision only because there are deeper functions of the OS that you only gain access to by virtue of having DEP, by Apple knowing that this device belongs to you. Otherwise, there are others, like let's say disable camera, that do not require supervision. So again, that's one of those restrictions that you can still distribute to your employees and disable the camera for the purpose of call it security. Um, but you do need to pay close attention and ensure that you can, um, that if it's your own device, that it's supervised and that you can take off some of those deeper elements. Or if it's not your device and it's a bring your own device or an employee owned device, ensure that you know that the workflow without supervision is still gonna provide the right um, outcome for you and for your employees.
All right, so without further ado, let's go back to our presentation. Oops, let's go back to our presentation. <laughs> Um, and just kind of give you some some quick go to the next steps. Um, so we have um, we work really hand in hand as as an evangelist. While I know many of you that are on the call today may have other resellers or, or work through other resellers, we as a Jamf Apple evangelist, um, I work primarily with the Apple business teams in the Apple retail environments. Um, so by virtue of that, if you do have a great relationship or a relationship with any one of those Apple Store business teams, you can set up a briefing. Uh, we can work on WebEx demos of Jamf Pro, uh, provide you access and information on how to better use Jamf now, which is what you just saw. Um, and, and they will help you to enroll your devices into one of the Apple deployment solutions. Now, we talked really, I said very quickly that the device enrollment program and the volume purchase program are being um, combined. And what's ultimately happening is Apple is making your experience better by combining these two solutions or making them key parts of what is now going to be called Apple Business Manager. So where, where you saw in the demo that we used two very significant pieces of the portal of the, of the portal and kind of showed you two different views, one being device enrollment program and what, what that entails, the other being the volume purchase program and what that entails, Apple basically said these two options are going to be a part of an overarching um, portal called Apple Business Manager, and your experience will become uh, a lot more seamless and a lot better for you to manage your MDM servers, your volume purchase, your volume purchases of apps, and be able to assign um, those devices to the right um, MDM server location, if you will, to make sure that you have a, a great experience. So, if you have not already done that, uh, now is a good time to touch base with your Apple Store business teams and make sure that you have your devices set up correctly uh, in either the old school version of DEP and VPP or what is soon to be the new, uh, the new format in Apple Business Manager. Um, for resources, well, there I am again at the top of the screen. Um, I think this, this, might, this graph or this, these pictures might actually be in uh, order of height as I'm 6'7". And I think Danielle is taller than Kat, so I, I tried to align this properly. <laughs> um, but we are uh, your evangelist team. So where I covered the majority of the West Coast or west of the Mississippi and all of Canada, Danielle covers um, everything east of the Mississippi, uh, not including Canada. Um, and so we work, we both work hand in hand with the actual retail store teams themselves. And then Kat is our strategic evangelist, and she works hand in hand with some of those uh, larger opportunities, you know, close to enterprise type opportunities with Apple um, and keeping them aligned with us here at Jamf as well. So we work really hard to make sure that um, customers and, and Apple Store business teams all have the resources needed to be successful. Um, and as you continue to move forward, we encourage you to speak to um, Apple solutions engineers to help you understand how to use the Apple Business Manager portal. Um, how do you migrate? If you're already in DEP and VPP, how do you migrate those uh, accounts and portals into Apple Business Manager and so on. Uh, and then obviously we have our, Jam our series of Jamf 100 courses if you wanted to come certified. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to be able to take a look at and manage uh, your own instance and become more knowledgeable as your company grows. And these webinars are going to be going on every month, um, maybe not this particular one, but we do have a series of great webinars. We have Jamf Now uh, versus Jamf Pro next month. Uh, successful probing for, for an MDM, uh, so anything that you need to have as a, as a baseline to, to, to ask yourself, why do I need one, uh, or why do I need Jamf, we can give you some great answers as to how we can help you be successful in choosing the right MDM. All right, so without further ado, let's get into some questions. Let's see what, uh, what you guys had for questions here, um, and we'll, uh, we'll move forward. We've got some great questions today. Okay. So, Apple starting to roll out Apple Business Manager, which I guess is like School Manager. Do we have any insight on this? And is Jamf ready for it? So, we are always we always we've always called ourselves uh, zero day ready. I believe that with Apple Business Manager, um, there are some great resources that we can that we can send to you uh, and direct you towards. But with Apple Business Manager, it really is just an upgrade to those two portals. So we are ready for it. Um, we are still, I think like all, like all, like everyone is doing, we're still learning 
um, some pieces to it, but we're very confident that um, from our perspective and, and from what Apple has done, uh, it's a great utility for customers. We are ready for whatever that means on our end, but for the most part, not much changes for us um, other than trying to explain a, a different portal for you guys and what that would look like. Um, we've used VPP and VEP for a couple of years and have them integrated with our Jamf installation. Fantastic. Would you recommend us changing to the new business portal and what do you see are the strengths and weaknesses of the new portal? So we haven't worked with the new portal. Again, all I can tell you with uh, Apple Business Manager is that it's not a replacement for an MDM as much as it's an improvement to the Apple, um, to the Apple portals themselves. So it's not, uh, it's not going to replace your MDM. If you look at a lot of the support documents, and like I said, at the end of this, um, this is being recorded. So at the end of all of this, I will not only uh, share the recording, but I will share with you some of the uh, um, documentation that helps to provide you some clarity. But it will be, uh, again, uh, an attachment to, uh, and then you will need to attach an MDM to it, very similar to why we said you can't have, DEP means nothing unless you have a great MDM server. Same thing will apply with Apple Business Manager, that it will be, you will need an MDM, um, and I'm going to say specifically Jamf. Uh, you're going to need Jamf to be able to help you distribute what you still need to outside of that. Can we find our customer number uh, on an Apple receipt? No. So you will need to partner with your Apple business team. Um, if you have a, an independent um, uh, purchasing portal or, 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 or um, Apple customer page that you can purchase from, I believe you can find it there, but your best bet is to just call your store team or your, or your Apple representative and find out what that customer number is. Uh, it's typically your SAP number. So um, whatever uh, that will look like for your organization, if you, if you don't have it set up, I would advise trying to get that set up as quickly and as early as possible. Does Jamf have the ability to show you the CPU, amount of RAM installed, and hard drive space? Um, yes, uh, and again, that's gonna come down to uh, um, Yes, actually, I'm not even gonna say it comes down to anything. So you can see that on both, uh, on both programs. The, the biggest part of this will be that in Jamf, um, now you get a very basic look at some of this information, but in Jamf Pro, you can, gosh, you can, you can get deep into every aspect of that device. Um, you can even add some criteria if you wanted to, so that way you can see a little bit more detail or something specific to your organization. So there's definitely some tools there that you can use to get uh, more detailed information and more inventory reporting information using Jamf Pro, but you can get some basic information from Jamf now. Um, how do we register existing Apple products that we have into DEP? Is there a way to do that retroactively? There is. Um, so there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, specifically, well, actually specifically as it relates to getting it into DEP, um, you need to use what's called, what is called Apple Configurator 2. Um, I would definitely partner with, uh, with an Apple S, uh, solutions engineer uh, or systems engineer uh, to make sure that you are under, that you understand how to use that program, but that program will definitely help you take some of those old devices. But again, the best thing you can do when you're putting it into DEP, um, I always say just automatically push it to the MDM server that you have. So make sure your DEP is set up, make sure your uh, Jamf, your Jamf instance is set up, whether again in Jamf Now or Jamf Pro, and then once you go through the Apple configuration tool, uh, Apple Configurator 2 uh, tool, you can direct it straight to that MDM server that you already have set up, and now you can continue uh, that full access or that full um, capability of zero touch, zero touch deployment after the fact. Um, and you want to make sure that, and you want to make sure you push it to one of your MDM servers. Otherwise, you'll have to do it. Um, you'll have to link it up to your computer every single time. Um, do we need to set up DEP to have fully managed and managed end devices? That's a great question. Um, where DEP becomes um, necessary is if you truly want to get to the point of zero touch deployment. So could you fully manage a device um, without DEP? Technically you can, but that's no different than doing imaging and provisioning by connecting everything to one computer. The point of all this between device enrollment and using Jamf is that you wanna be able to do it without having to bring the product into your environment and, and, and managing it that way. So 
the best way to do it is to have it in DEP, attach it to a Jamf server or to a Jamf instance and manage things remotely so that way you can save yourself some sanity and a lot of desk space. Um, device activation. So um, for anyone that, if you missed any part of the presentation, um, I will send this out to you. It will be very easy to kind of um, scroll through the presentation as you need. Um, but uh, so for the question about going through the device activation piece again, um, I, I will send, when you see this presentation, when you see the recording, um, please uh, just go ahead and fast forward to that section. It'll help you to understand what, what it can do. Is the blueprint option you used earlier part of Jamf now, or can you use it uh, with a locally hosted Jamf server, thus avoiding Apple Configurator? Um, blueprints are specific to Jamf now. If you have a hosted Jamf server on site or on prem, uh, the, I'm assuming that means that you're using Jamf Pro. And within Jamf Pro, blueprints are a, um, are a lighter version of what you would call profile configuration. So uh, continue to use your profile configuration. Um, again, if it's, if it's something that um, if you need to manage or to be able to push a, an old device into, um, into one of your Jamf instances, and you don't want to use DEP, you can always use what's called user-initiated enrollment or open enrollment in Jamf now. Um, that's just basically enrolling a device through a web link. But uh, we can talk more about that as well. Uh, but for the most part, you know, you can do a lot um, remotely once you have them in DEP and so on. I work with schools. By comparison to some education-focused MDM solutions, you are very expensive, uh, very expensive. Do you have competitive EDU options? We, you know, for, for education, we do have an education department that does get um, aggressive, that does help a lot uh, in terms of, in terms of what you're facing. Um, so I would, um, I would encourage you to reach out to our education partners. Um, I'm going to actually, while I'm on here, here's what I'll do. Uh, in the chat sequence, I'm going to enter my email. And that way, if you have any specific questions around education or healthcare, um, feel free to email me at my email address, and I will definitely make that introduction to our team to help you understand what next steps look like uh, as it relates to those questions. So thank you for that question. Um, obviously, we have a very dedicated team and staff that uh, that's focused on education. So um, can we build computer labs hands off? Well, we got into this with and Apple SC. We have Jamf Pro. Can we completely, can we get a completely hands-off workflow? Um, you know, that essentially, I want to say yes. So the, uh, and this is for, I think this is Bruce Carter. Um, so we would need to dive into uh, more of what your workflow looks like to understand what would need, you know, what, what can be done through, um, what can be done through using Jamf. Um, my first inclination is to say that you, we can probably off, we can probably offload a lot of your workflow uh, and make you completely hands off, especially when it relates to computer labs. So we just want to make sure that we understand. Um, we just want to make sure that we understand what your workflow is, and and help you find the right uh, the right solution. But I, I tend to think that um, we can help provide some solutions around any uh, any formal workflow. Um, is Jamf now offer tools to migrate from other MDM solutions such as Meraki? So we don't offer um, a complete, call it a uh, transition tool uh, for Jamf now. Um, but within Jamf now, if you have your servers already lined up, you can you can definitely um, push. Within the DEP portal, you can switch your servers over to um, over to Jamf now, as opposed to using Meraki. And then, by doing so, you can actually start, you know, remanaging your blueprints uh, to kind of fit what you were doing on Meraki as well. So there's going to be a little bit of legwork, but as long as you have Jamf, one of your Jamf products in the DEP portal, and you can redirect your devices to that to, to that instance, all you have to do is, you know, if you're in Jamf now, before you make that transition. Set up your blueprints, work with a couple of devices as the first three devices are free in Jamf now. Um, figure out what configuration you need. And once that's done, 
you can basically assign those DEP devices that you have away from Meraki into Jamf now and specifically to the blueprint that you need. So that might help you to, uh, to make a quick and easy transition if you needed to. How does DEP and Jamf ensure that the MDM profile cannot be removed? Does it matter if the user is an, is an administrator on the system? So what happens is with DEP, because you own the device, and Jamf recognizes that you own the device through DEP, it basically enforces that that device, because you own it, you, it, it, it isolates that, that profile uh, to the device, so that way the employee cannot remove it. Anything else will at least require uh, a 30-day, um, a 30-day, uh, we call it grace period or 90-day grace period for it to kind of stick, um, or it's gonna be completely removable. But because you own it and because you've identified it as being yours through DEP, uh, Jamf recognizes that it's important that you keep your profile in there. So it helps us to be able to enforce that, uh, that restriction that they cannot remove that, uh, that profile. Uh, like supervisors, we do not want employees to lose their text message history when wiping the device. Is there a way around this? So um, they can still back up their own iCloud information ultimately, but it will not back up your information. So you can prohibit them from backing up your information, so even if you do a complete wipe and reinstall, as long as their iCloud backup has been, um, is effective, they can always regain their history of their text messages. Um, so again, that, that becomes a little bit of a workflow and, and conversation around how that, how that workflow um, or management will work in their workflow. But for the most part, as long as they're using iCloud to backup their text messages, they should be able to, uh, they should be able to migrate that information back in. Does Jamf integrate with LDAP or Google Apps for user management? Um, for, in terms of apps, as long as it's available in the iOS or Mac OS store, yes. Um, in terms of um, any type of active directory um, or, or directory services, um, you can manage a certain aspect of like uh, Exchange, uh, Google, and Yahoo Mail as an example in Jamf now, but you get full directory access and, and, and linking that directory to Jamf Pro uh, in a way that you can't do in Jamf now. So I would take a deeper look into that as well. If the user changes the passcode, not able to get into the iPad, is there a way to reset it in Jamf? So you can unlock the device um, in Jamf now. I believe you can reset the passcode in Jamf Pro, but I'll get you those details um, as quickly as I can. Uh, but yes, you can at least unlock the device and grant them access back into it. Um, what systems can be enrolled into DEP? So um, basically, DEP, you can enroll Mac OS or iOS, um, and I believe even TV OS now as well. So Apple TVs, uh, and you know, most uh, iOS devices going back to, I think, iOS 6, um, and then every, and then Mac OS going back to, um, I'm going back quite, quite a while, actually. <laughs> uh, Jeff Now versus Jeff Pro, a lot of questions there. Stay tuned to uh, stay tuned and take a look for uh, our our webinar next month on Jamf Now versus Jamf Pro. We'll give you the basics on what Jamf Now is, and we'll give you the advances that Jamf Pro can do. Uh, is it going to eventually support TVOS 12, or will Apple TV management remain exclusive to Jamf Pro? As far as I know, Apple TV management was going to stay with Jamf Pro, but we are constantly innovating. So um, who knows what can happen in the future? Um, are there differences between being enrolled in the enterprise DEP over standard DEP? We need to sideload a couple of apps. That's a great question. I do not have an answer for that one, unfortunately. But that would be a great question for your Apple representative. My understanding is that it's the same portal either way, um, but I would still confirm with your solutions engineer at Apple um, or with uh, some of those Apple teams to make sure that, uh, that, we're, that you're in alignment in that case. All right, we've answered uh, a lot of questions. I'm going to apologize. I want to be respectful of everyone's time today. Um, we're a little bit past the hour. Um, I'm going to try and if you, if I have not answered your question, please, I, like I said, my email is available to you in the chat, in the chat screen. I'll type it one more time. Um, this has been a tremendous, um, a tremendous grouping of individuals. So I want to respect each and every one of you and what you want to accomplish. So if you get a chance to email me your questions at chris.beams at jamf.com, um, I would love to be able to support you and make sure we point you in the right direction. And so we will work really hard to make sure that you have the right solution as it pertains to Jamf and make sure that you're going to be successful with both Apple and Jamf as your partner. 
So without further ado, I'm going to wish you all a very, very happy Wednesday. Um, have a great and successful week. Um, again, my name is Christine. It's been an honor uh, being able to do this for all of you. And we look forward to your continued engagement and partnership as we help to create a better Apple future uh, using Jamf. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Have a wonderful week. And uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Take care.